in certain situations, obesity could negatively impact patient pop our patient population. Um, a lot of times when a woman has an ep epidural, um, you're pretty numb from like the waist down. Um, and you have to do certain interventions during labor, even for someone who's not overweight, but just all patients in general, um, like turning them to the left or the right. And um, you know, an epidural can cr create a hurdle, but also being obese creates another hurdle. A lot of times you kind of need two people, not just one person to turn you. And a lot of times you know, baby heart rate dips and then you haven't done the intervention quick enough, you know, it. It can neg negatively impact your baby. Uh, you know, labor in general is a stressful event. Um, if for some reason you have to rush back for a C-section um, and you're overweight, uh, a lot of times your doctor's goal is to get, you know, to cut through and get the baby out as quick as possible. But if they have more layers to go through, that could impact the, the delivery of your infant. My name is Dr. Dan Wheeler. I've been practiced for uh, six years now here in Akron. So being overweight or being obese makes all of the diseases that you'll have harder to treat, slower to recover from. Um, I've had patients with COVID-19. Uh, they come in with respiratory infection and the obesity uh, puts more stress and more strain on their lungs, which just makes it harder for them to recover from an infection like that. I see about 100, 120 patients every week in the hospital and I've had to tell them that one of the causes of their disease, whether it be they come in with a stroke or a heart attack or a bad diabetic infection, but one of the biggest causes of their condition is the weight and the issues they're dealing with. They're usually aware that they have weight issues, they're overweight, they're obese, they don't always understand the complications that you get down the road from being obese and how it is affecting them. Uh, they're usually sometimes embarrassed, sometimes in a state of shock or even denial. But for many patients, it's a wake up call, start making some changes with their lifestyle and their diet and to improve their medical health overall. Hi, I'm Nathan Harris. I am the assistant boys varsity soccer coach at Ken Roosevelt High School. I've been coaching for about three years now. Um, I used to coach the middle school there, got promoted um, about a year ago. The importance of kids having a structured um, environment for exercise with organized sport is pretty important. Um, I think seeing kids that have gone through it at the high school and the middle school level, they've been able to um, stay fit, stay focused. They have a good self-awareness when it comes to school as well as just the balance in life in general. And I know younger cousins, uh, younger family friends that all they do is they sit around and play video games after school, don't really do their homework. They just don't really have the structure that I think organized sports um, provides for them. For kids who may not be suited to be in a team sport or that may not like the environment of other kids around them, a good way for them to exercise is kind of just get outside, um, walk with their pets, walk with friends, family, um, just spend time outdoors, just learn the importance of staying active. For most of my adult life, I fought my war against obesity by, well, literally preparing for war. The foundation for that was laid with a strong family lineage of military service. However, after I left the service two and a half years ago, I switched to a rather different motivation. So when he was about three, I guess, he was looking at a picture of Danny DeVito in the newspaper and said, Daddy! I said, no, just somebody who looks like him. I'm guessing you're scared after all that. Here's how you can contribute to the war on obesity. Follow my recommendations and you'll see at least some improvement. Look at the calorie count in one 12 ounce can of Coca-Cola. Even at a rate of one per day, that's an extra 50,000 calories per year or an extra 25 days worth of calories.
Switch to either diet soda or something like this. This DiGiorno pizza has 360 calories in one-fifth of the pie. That's almost your daily recommended calorie intake in one meal. If you're going to eat this stuff, do it with family and friends. I run, box, and lift. I also train with a home kit consisting of a tomahawk kettlebells and knives I document every individual weightlifting exercise in this handy journal. I record which workouts I've done on which days on this dry erase calendar. I hope you've learned a thing or two. If you'd like to know more, here's where you can contact me.